Thanks, Karen. This weekend marks the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. And joining us now is author Alan Wolf. He recently wrote a book, The Watch That Ends the Night, Voices from the Titanic. He's also going to be at UNC Asheville tomorrow to sort of read some excerpts and talk about the book. Right, right? yeah. So tell us a little bit about the book. Well, the, there's a lot of books coming out about the Titanic and how it was put together and what happened and the history of it. What I wanted to do was write a book about the people aboard the Titanic because I think that's really what keeps us fascinated, not necessarily the nuts and bolts, but the stories of the actual people that were on the ship. And so I set out to write a book in 24 different voices, and they all tell their own story about what happens, and those stories are interwoven to create one whole story. So what inspired you to write a book about the Titanic? What is it about that ship that, that caused you to write this book? Well, I'm, I am enamored of the ship for the same reason all of us are. And, you know, it, one thing, I, I knew that the Titanic uh, sinking cent uh, centennial was coming up. So mm -hmm. I wanted a book that was in the news, but I also wanted a book with multiple characters. And I was curious about what those people were going through because I knew about the, the James Cameron movie mm -hmm. and Jack and Rose. Of course. And I'm flying, Jack. <laughs> I wanted to know what the story was from all the people behind the scenes, the ones that are in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's, I didn't know, I didn't, I knew that it sank, but I didn't know how it got there and all those unanswered questions, that's what I was after. And you were telling me in the commercial break, the title comes from a hymn that was actually sung on the Titanic? Yep, uh, the, on Sunday, on the Sunday morning before it sank, it sinks, it sinks, it hits the iceberg on Sunday night. Well, that Sunday in second class, they did a hymn sing. And one of the hymns that they sang was, uh, Our God Whose Help in Ages Past. And one of the lines is, The Watch That Ends the Night. And uh, so it seemed like a perfect title for the book because a uh, ship schedule, the officers and the, the workers, the crew, it's set up into watches. Mm -hmm. That's what they do, that's their shifts. And of course, we're all watching to see what happens and we're watching to see if there's an iceberg ahead. And we as the reader are watching to see what the people are gonna do and how it's gonna come out. So sure. it seems perfect. You have an excerpt or two that you're gonna read for us? Sure do. Go ahead and do that. All right, this first one is in the point of view of the undertaker who is sent out to collect the bodies after this Titanic has gone down. And he's the narrative frame for all of this. His name is John Snow, The Undertaker. Sunday arrives, our first day of harvesting corpses, and I determined to make the best of the challenging task at hand. Happily on this fourth day out, I have found my sea legs and keep my breakfast down. Over coffee, the lads from the late night dog watch tell me they spotted bodies floating in the darkness, rising and falling with the swells occasionally bumping the ship's hull. One of the firemen, Arminius Wiseman, swears, it's as if they wanted to clamor aboard. I, I didn't sleep a wink all night. I'm undone. But I am the undertaker, and I am an old hand at death. Men who walk among the dead as I do must cultivate a certain emotional remove, indifference, an indifference to death, indifference, an indifference to the dead. I finish my cup and climb to the sun deck. I inhale the Atlantic's cold April air, ready for whatever the coming day might bring. A half mile off the McKay Bennett's bow, a flock of seagulls floats on the swells. Seagulls, so many miles from land. Lower away, Captain Larnder commands. Ropes creak through the pulleys as the first small boat descends in its davits, carrying a crew of five. As the small cutter reaches the water, I see a half dozen bodies. They look strange, as if standing in the shallows of a pond, heads and shoulders above the surface, buoyed ingeniously by their bulky life vests of bright white canvas and cork. And I'm gonna stop you right there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful prose. Uh, very d deep and, and uh, kind of a little bit, what, traumatizing, a little bit disturbing, right? Yes. Um, collecting the bodies would have been a disturbing thing. It's a, it's a point of view from the story that we, mm -hmm. we rarely get. Sure. And yet, in a way, it's the most human story there is, which is why I wanted to depict him 
finding these people and coming to know them just through the artifacts right. that they had on their bodies at the time. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, author Alan Wolf. Uh, you can buy his books anywhere here in Western North Carolina where books are sold. And Alan will be at the UNC at UNCA tomorrow at the Laurel Forum Carpen Hall to discuss the book. You can also purchase, as I just mentioned, the book at a bookstores here in Western North Carolina. More news and weather after the break.